Lord, she is sick in body, and we need you to touch her body tonight. God, we cry out for strength tonight. Lord, that you would move on him. Heal their body right now. We bind any disease. We rebuke any sickness in them, and we loose your healing authority right now. God, we pray over this service. Lord, we invite your presence. Have your will and your way tonight. God, if there is anything in my heart, anything in my mind that keeps me from hearing you tonight, God, forgive me. Forgive me tonight, Jesus, and allow me to be able to be, come before you pure of my heart, pure of mind, Jesus. I need to come before you right now, God, with a true repentant heart, and I need to hear you tonight. I don't want tonight to be another Sunday night, but God, I want to hear from you. I want an anointed touch tonight. I want to have a word tonight. God, move on me. Move on this church. Stir us, God. Shake us, Lord. We love you. Bless this praise team as they sing. Anoint the word as it goes forward. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. Worship with this praise team as they sing. Amen. I praise when I number, praise when surrounded. My praise is the water, my enemies drowned in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a Keep it. 
Come on, church, receive that right now. Receive it right now. Not that a miracle can happen, but a miracle will happen. A miracle will happen. A miracle is happening. It is happening. God, I thank you for your miracles. I thank you, God, for the miracle. My heart has cried out to you. My heart has cried out to you. Jesus. 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 
I receive it right now, Lord. I receive it right now. My God, I have cried out. Lord, you said to ask, and I shall receive. I love you, God. I love you, God. I receive my miracle. It is happening. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. God, I praise you. I praise you. It's not enough just to think that it can happen. It's not enough to just think that maybe it'll happen. But you've got to declare it. You've got to receive it. You've got to say, God, I know that it is happening. I love you, Jesus. I praise you. Lord, I worship you. It can happen. It can happen. Amen. 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 I love you, Jesus. I love you, God. Jesus, I praise you. God, oh, I love what I feel in the house tonight. God is moving, and he, there is going to be some miracles that take place. There are miracles that are happening. It's something that you can't see on the surface, but I promise you, miracles are happening. Amen. Well, let's turn and greet somebody. Tell them it can happen. It's happening. name it's happening in Jesus name you may be seated Lord I love you God mm. April 30th the youth and hyphen have a scavenger hunt it starts at seven o'clock you want to participate there is a men's fishing trip taking place May 2nd through the 4th we need two more fellows to join us see brother Cromweed for this trip money's due April 28th and then on May 5th, everybody say my, May 5, Reverend Paul Connor will be ministering to us here at Lighthouse Church. We're excited about that. You want to make plans to attend that here on Sunday. As our ushers come on up, this morning, if you uh, missed it, we had Sister Marcia share with us um, about Ladies Memorial and fundraising. We took pledges this morning. I'm sure they will continue to take pledges this evening, see an usher for a pledge card. There has been a challenge issue. The gauntlet was thrown down between the men and the women. The winner gets to enjoy what the ladies are making for us. And, um, <laughs> and so uh, let's keep la Mother's Memorial, or Ladies, Mother's Memorial, Ladies Memorial. That's what I said, isn't it? Okay, yeah, all right, very <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we thank you, God, for your many blessings on us tonight. God, I love what you're doing already in this house, and I want to continue to receive your word. I want to continue to feel your presence, God. Don't stop what you're doing tonight, Jesus. We receive it right now. Bless this offering, Lord, and continue to bless the rest of the service. In your mighty name, amen.
Come on, let's sing that again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Every life can be restored. right now. Come on, pray for angels to be here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's in the room. God, He's in this room. Everything, everything that's dead comes I love you, Jesus, and I praise your name. Hallelujah. Why don't you grab the neighbor, your neighbor's hand right now, and let's just, let's just pray together right now. Hallelujah. He's in this room where it's appropriate. Grab the hand of your neighbor, and let's pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's turn our praise into prayer. Hallelujah. Let's fill this whole entire room with prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's press into it just a little bit. Let's press into it just a little bit longer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Praise God. As I was praying this morning as in our, during our service, and kneeling down, what an incredible message Brother Foster preached this morning. Can we, can we acknowledge that? Give God the praise for it. But I will tell you that is not a message any preacher wants to preach. It's not a word of God any preacher wants to hear, but it is a word that we must hear when it is the word. But as I was praying, God began to deal with me and told me, he said, if someone does not 
here, adhere to the word of God that's being preached, you will receive a phone call in two weeks. I began to weep before the Lord because that just breaks me. Makes me sick to my stomach, makes me want to not eat. To think that that phone call would happen in about two weeks. And I pray and I, I was praying and I asked God, Lord, please have mercy. and Lord, speak to them, continue to deal with them, continue to strive with them, whoever it is. God said, turn around. I said, I don't want to turn around. He said, turn around and look and see who is not adhering to the word of God. I said, God, I don't want to. He said, look. And that's when I, I got up and I came up here and I said what I, I said because God was dealing with me so much. Can I, just, can I just tell you that, and I realize I'm preaching to the choir, but this is serious, this is serious stuff. We don't come here to play games. We're not here to, to just uh, glorify ourselves or to pass time, but we're trying to make it to heaven tonight. Amen. And I believe that there were some sincere hearts this morning, and I thank you. I thank you for responding in, in such a way. And I, I've been thanking God all day. As much as, uh, as we were kind of, we were said to Brother Foster, we, we, I don't, that, was, that was a good message, but a bad message. It was an incredible message. Because I'm going to tell you what, I want God to talk to me and deal with me when I need to be dealt with. And I thank God for the warning of the Lord. <clears throat> Praise God. Aren't you thankful for that? So I've been thanking God all day. Thank you for that word. And thank you for sending a preacher that would obey the voice of God. Amen. If you would, have grab your Bibles. I'm going to have the foster come. I just want us to, real quick, I want them to, uh, if you would, bring your family. Uh, and bring, Brother and Sister Foster, would you just come up here? And um, they're an extension of our, of our family. They're, of course, some of our best friends on, on the planet Earth. And uh, they're great friends and family of this, of, this, of this great church. Just come right here in front, brother, and you can just face me. And uh, Brother Carl, I want you to stay right there if you would. And you're going to pray. If, you're going to help me pray with the Fosters. And uh, I want us just to, if you would, just reach your hand out for, forward. They've got a, a revival coming up in California. They'll be traveling for about four months. And they'll be preaching at multiple churches. And I am believing for a great and mighty revival in every one of those churches. Some of them are new churches. Some of them are a little are older. But I am believing for a great flood of revival. That revival go before them. That the fire of the Holy Ghost is poured out upon them. And that I, this is how I want you to pray. And God, as they, as they pour out, I want you to pour, please, pour virtue and strength into them. Amen. Can we pray for this sweet family right now as a church family? Hallelujah. I love you, God, and I praise your name, Jesus. I I'm believing that there are going to be hundreds of souls reached, perhaps even thousands of souls reached over the next four months. Can we thank God for that? We're not, we may not know, we may not see one soul, but I'm going to tell you they're going to see, be seen in the kingdom of God. Let's praise Him for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, God. I appreciate you. Hallelujah. Brother Foster, Sister Foster, I love you. My wife, and I love you. This church loves you. Amen. We're going to get behind you tonight. Church, we're going to get behind him tonight, aren't we? Amen. I realize that all of us are just a little tired. And if anybody's tired, I imagine it's going to be Brother Foster because he's preached this morning. He's preached all last week uh, or several times in the past couple of weeks. And then youth convention, we had an incredible youth convention. And God moved powerfully and he gave 150% every day in the background and in the front. And I love him, and it's an honor to serve with him and his wife. Brother Foster, come and minister to us tonight. Let's lift our hands, and let's just love the Lord for the Fosters right now. Let's thank God for him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Love you. 
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God praise. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're wonderful, Jesus. We bless your name. God, we worship you. Come on, let's praise him. I love you, Jesus. I love the whole, I love, I love what you do for me. I love the fact that you filled me with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself because it's right in line what I'm about to be preaching. But as your pastor was talking about, we want angels to be in this room. God brought the scripture, 1 Peter 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 12. I just want to read this to you real quick. Uh, this is not what I'm preaching, but I, I, I feel prompted to read this. It says, unto whom it was revealed that un, not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. You want the angelic? Get in the Holy Ghost. You want a supernatural visitation? Get in the Holy Ghost. You want to see signs and wonders and miracles? You want to see God working in your life? It is found in the Spirit of Almighty God. I believe that the answer to everything that we need is found in the Holy Ghost. Would you lift your hands and would you pray in the Holy Ghost? Come on, every hand in the building lifted. And as you do that, lift your voice and begin to speak in tongues. As the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Hey, the angels desire to look into these things. The angels are looking at what's happening right now on Tomahawk Road. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's do that for about 30 more seconds. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, it's real. It's real. I rebuke every doubt in our minds. In Jesus' name, it's real. The Holy Ghost is real. It's real. It's real. It's real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, if you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. And then we're also going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. And while you are turning there, I want to take just a moment and uh, give honor to Pastor and Sister Strader. I love them so much. It's been so nice being here, uh, being here with Lighthouse Church, being here with them. Uh, thank you so much for the basket and just taking such good care of us and for letting us come, uh, being, being with you these past couple of Sundays. I'll uh, give honor also to my wife and my two daughters. Love them so much. Amen. When you have 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, say amen. amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion. Everybody say communion. The communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19. It's four words, but it's an extremely powerful verse in the Bible. Let's read it together. Quench not the Spirit. One more time. Quench not the Spirit. I just want to talk about culture tonight. I want to talk about the culture of the church. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the anointing. I ask Jesus that your perfect will would be done in this place. Pray, God, that you would give us liberty, God. I pray, Lord, that anything that is contrary to your will, will demonic or human, we bind it in Jesus' name. Ask God that you would help us, Jesus, to receive your word. Help us to act on your word, God. Help us, Jesus, to submit to your spirit, Father. Let your perfect will be done. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Can we all say in Jesus' name? Would you clap your hands and give God praise once more before you're seated? 
And before you're seated, go across the aisle and high-five somebody. Let's move a little bit. Go find somebody to high-five and tell them it's good to have the Holy Ghost. Now look at somebody else and say, are you ready to worship God? Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about culture tonight. Talk about the culture of, uh, of us as children of God. Culture is a way of life for a society. Countries and People groups and communities will have cultures, and you'll have nations that will have subcultures, and in these subcultures, you'll have other subcultures. But it, culture is something that defines a group of people. There are certain things that people do and that they don't do because of their culture. There, are, it, it's the way of life. It is a, it, it is a normal way of life. That is what a culture is. It's the way that people live their life. It's the, the nuances that define who they are and what they are. I had the privilege of, uh, I worked with our church for evangelizing um, for almost four years, and I really all I did was teach Bible studies in. Um, during that time, I got the opportunity to meet a lot of different people, and I got I got to be exposed to some different cultures, and one of the uh, most interesting ones was a there was an Iraqi family that I co- I'd connected with. They'd come, and I was able to set up a Bible study with him. And he was he was a part of the uh, the military in Iraq. They'd wind up coming over uh, to the states, and they, they were living in Phoenix. But I I went and I was doing a Bible study with them, and I remember going there, and they brought me this coffee. Now I will never ever ever say no to coffee. I believe that coffee is extremely important to everything that we do. It's hard to have revival without coffee. And they brought me coffee. And um, this coffee was about that big a glass, and um, it was so strong. I love coffee, but I never drank coffee that strong. In fact, when I got done with it, you know, I don't drink black coffee. I I like lattes. (laughs) And man, that coffee woke me up, and there was like the bean sludge was on the bottom of it. It was, it was, it was thick stuff. And so I came back another time. They said, "Do you want coffee or do you want tea?" I said, "Well, let's try the tea this time." And the tea was it was, and I'm not a tea guy, but that tea made me want to be a tea guy. It was incredible. It was the best tea I've ever had in my life. And so um, I would sit there, and they would be about three sips into their tea, and I was already done with my first cup. And she was, she would fill, you know, she would give me more tea. I didn't realize that this tea had just as much caffeine as the coffee did, and so that's why they were sipping on it. And I'm, I'm chugging it because it was so good. And the more that I drank, the quicker I talked. I, they weren't able to follow me after about two cups because I was talking so fast. I finished an hour Bible study in about 25 minutes. But I found something out. I went there, and, and every time I would drink the tea and I'd finish the cup, they were very quick to fill it up again. And I went there one time, and, and they had made dinner. And I sat down, and, and I, it was insisted upon me to eat the dinner. And so I ate it, and it was good. It was, it was fantastic food. But I finished the plate. I cleaned the plate off, and I was full. I did not want to eat anymore. And the, his name was Johnny. He, he insisted. It was not, I was like, no, he said, you, you got to have more food. I said, no, I am so full, I can't eat more food. He said, no, you are going to eat more food. And so he put more food on the plate. And I ate until I couldn't eat anymore. There was some food left, but I was talking to a missionary from the Middle East, and he, he pointed out, he said, the culture, the Middle Eastern culture, and I might not have it all together, this is what he told me, and it made sense from what I experienced. He said, if you are drinking something there in their house and you finished it, their culture says that, uh, according to their culture, that means that you are not satisfied because there was not enough there. And so they have to fill it up. Or if you are eating food on a plate and you clean the plate. Listen, growing up, we cleaned the plate. That was my culture. I still clean plates. I don't have leftovers. I never met a leftover in my life. And I aim to keep it that way. But I cleaned the plate. 
But their culture said, you know, he's still hungry because he finished the food. And so it was insisted upon me to, uh, it was insisted upon me to eat more because according to their culture, I was still hungry. According to my culture, I was full. It's cultures, it's nuances. It's, it's something that people live by. It's something that, that defines uh, that defines people's life. And I know I am not the first person to say this. You have probably heard many messages and people talk about this in one way or another. But there is a, a culture that must be present in the church. We are living in a culture in our country and our cities have cultures and the neighborhoods that we live in have cultures and the little suburbs that we live in, if we, you know, are the schools that we go to have cultures. But there is a subculture uh, that, that really must be the most dominant culture in our life that must be present in the church every single day. It's not things like how we do church. That's preference. We come to church and y'all do thir- three songs and then you do offering and you have another song and then you get to the preaching. And I've been to other churches that would do one song and do offering and then a couple of more songs and then have the preaching. And then a couple of other churches will do two songs and then they'll have announcements. And it, There's a lot of different ways to have church. I'm not talking about that. That's preference. The, it, it, just about any church you go to, they're probably going to do things a little bit different. But there are things that every single one apostolic church should have in common. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. That word communion means fellowship or association or community. The culture is found in community. Culture is found in the things that we associate with. Culture is found in what we are fellowshipped with. That this is where culture is found. And so the, what, the, the thing that links the church is not how they order their service and not the songs that they sing. But the thing that links the church is the Holy Ghost. The thing that links every single one of us together is the Holy Ghost. The communion of the Holy Ghost. The community or the fellowship or the association of the Holy Ghost. The culture of the Holy Ghost. This is what links us as a church to a church that preaches truth over in India. This is what links us as a church to a church that preaches the truth in Colorado. We might do things different in our services, but if they are baptized in Jesus' name and they are living a holy life and they're preaching truth... uh, And if they are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, there is a culture that we share. Not songs and not service order, but there is a culture of the Spirit of God that should be present in both of our churches. I read that culture refers to a group or community shares common experiences that shape the way its members understand the world. It includes groups that we are born into. Well, if I want to be a part of the culture, I need to be born again. I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. But it goes so much farther than just the simple birth. Because a child that is born does not have a full grasp of their culture the first day that are that they are born. A child that, my, my daughter Amelia, she does not have a full grasp on the culture of my family uh, being two years old. There needs to be some growth. There needs to be some, some maturation in their lives so that they can come and realize and understand what culture is. Yes, we are born into it, but there needs to be a staying there. There needs to be a developing in the culture to where we are able to assimilate into this culture, and that culture begins to permeate our life. I'm talking about the culture of the Holy Ghost. It's not enough just to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost one time and call it good, but I need to live in the Holy Ghost. It needs to permeate every day of my life. I need to mature in the Holy Ghost. God's Spirit needs to be with me every day of my life so that I can get fully accustomed to the culture of God so that I can get fully accustomed to the culture of His Spirit and what it means to be a child of the Lord. I need to be defined by the Holy Ghost. Amen. I need to be guided by the Holy Ghost. Who I am should not be based on who my family is. 
And who I am should not be based on what, what I do or what my preference is or what my interests are. Really, my define, my, the thing that should define my life should ultimately be the Spirit of God. I want God's Spirit to define my life. I want God's Spirit to, I want, I want that to be who I am. I don't want somebody to look at me and say, well, man, he's, a, he, he's great at doing this or he's good at doing that. No, I want somebody to know me by who I am a part of. I want, I want to be known by the spirit that is living inside of me. I want my life to be defined by the culture of the Holy Ghost. I need to get my worldview and my mindset from God. We get in trouble. We get in trouble if we do not live our life through the lens of the Holy Ghost. When I start letting things and and, 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 and world events surrounding us affect my emotions or affect what I do or what I don't do, news or people or whatever. I, I've got to make sure that that is not what is defining me or that is not what is dictating the way that I'm feeling or dictating what I am doing or what I'm not doing. I want my life to be led and to be dictated by the Spirit of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That word course is ion, which means an age, an era, a period of time. Commentary said this, in conformity with the customs and manner of the world at large, the wor- word rendered here as world means properly age, but is often used to denote the present world with its cares, temptations, and desires. What it's talking about is the culture of the world. There's a culture of our world. (laughs) And our culture, the culture of the world that we live in changes so drastically almost from one year to the next. Uh, the, The culture of our world is so different now than what it was when I was in high school. Schools are so different now from what it was when I graduated 11 or 12 years ago. It's so it's changed so much. And the world would like to make you think that it's always been like this. There's always been transvestites all over the place. No, that is a culture that has changed. But their Bible talks about the culture, uh, uh, the, 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 the course of this world. You want to know what that means? It means that the culture of our world is guided and dictated by hell. And it's always changing because hell is the author of confusion. And so things are changing all the time and things are getting crazier and things are not making sense because people are led by the course of this world. You want to know why the people of God are the light to the world? Because when everything is always changing and when there is nothing that is true and nothing that is solid, there is a church that has a single godly culture that it does not matter what is happening outside of the four walls of the church you can come into an apostolic church and there's still going to be godly godliness there's still going to be righteousness there's still going to be peace and joy why because my life is not led by the course of this world that is bound by satan but my life is dictated by the things of God. My life is defined by the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4, but God who's rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sin has quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved and raised us up to sit together and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. John 6, 63, the spirit, it's, it's the spirit that gives life. God's spirit, I'm going somewhere, I promise. But God's spirit is what we live by. It says he's made us to sit in heavenly places. Now I'm not up in heaven right now, but I'm pretty sure what that verse is talking about is that God has given us the ability to rise above some things. He's given us the ability to sit above some things. I don't have to be affected by the current of the world because God's spirit that has raised me up by his grace, it gives me the ability to, I have a different perspective on things. I, I don't have to be pushed and moved around by every wind of doctrine, but but but, but by God's spirit, uh, he, he 
takes me out of the realm of the world and puts me in a heavenly realm, a heavenly culture. He, he, he separates me from some things by his spirit. He, he removes me from some things by his spirit. And he places me in some places by his spirit. He removes me outside of sin and wickedness. And he places me in a heavenly atmosphere. That's what the Holy Ghost is. That's heaven come to earth. When we are filled with the Holy Ghost, that's Jesus Christ coming and sitting on the throne of our life. You want to know what that is? That's him by his grace taking you out of sin and wickedness and setting you in heavenly places. This is why 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. There's an influence of the Spirit. There, there is a, a moving and a pushing and a drawing and a there is a, uh, Brother Caleb Herring was talking about it on Thursday night at Youth Convention, a flow of the Holy Ghost. But this verse in four words gives us so much insight. I can stop the Spirit from moving. The Bible says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. God does not overtake us. God does not control us outside of our wills. I have to submit. That's how I've received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I've got to submit to it. If you're trying to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, if you are trying to force it, it will never happen. But it is a gift that must be received. The Bible says the tongue is the most unruly member in our body. And when we speak in tongues, that means we have fully yielded to the Spirit of God. But I've got to submit to it. I've got to give God my tongue. When I'm worshiping God and I'm saying hallelujah and I feel my tongue try to start moving, what that is is God's Spirit trying to take over. He's trying to, he's trying to fill me to overflowing. But if I keep control of my tongue, I will never receive receive the gift of the Holy Ghost because I've got to yield to God completely. I've got to make sure I'm not quenching the Spirit because I have the ability in my God-given free will to quench the Spirit. God will never force us to do anything, but He wants us to partner with Him. He wants us to let Him lead us and guide us and prompt us. And so God's Spirit will work in our life, but it is up to me whether I respond to it. And I let it do what it's wanting to do in my life uh, or in my church uh, or in my family but I got to understand uh, that I can quench what God is doing in my life so I want to talk about some aspects of a spirit led culture if that's okay on a Sunday night God's culture wants to permeate our private relationship and I'm not going to go into a deep discussion on praying in the spirit because you've heard so much of it and you this is a praying church but I just want to address talk about some things I need to worship and I need to I need to glorify God but there's something to be said about about a private relationship with God where where the spirit has so much control in our life the Bible says the antichrist spirit will wear out the saints of God saints of God but the Bible also says that we build ourselves up on our most holy faith by praying in the Spirit. That's where our strength comes from. That's where growth, that's where maturing comes from. That's where, that, that's where God can begin to make us into who He wants us to be. I grow in my faith by praying in the Spirit. I grow in my relationship with God by praying in the Spirit. If I'm struggling with things all the time and I'm anemic and I can't seem to get victory over anything, and I know we struggle at times, but a question that I would be inclined to ask is how much time do you spend praying in the Holy Ghost? Because the Bible says that I don't know what to, I need to pray for like I ought to, but the Spirit the Spirit of God makes intercession through me with groanings that cannot be uttered. You don't want to know what that's really saying? Saying you don't know what to pray, but the Spirit of God knows what to pray. You're going to do a whole lot more by praying in the Spirit to, than praying with your understanding. Hey, we need to pray in our understanding, but we need to pray in the Spirit. To, I need to get into the Spirit and let God begin to pray through me. I can begin to move things uh, that I never could on my own. Why? Because God knows what to ask for. God knows what to declare. God 
knows what to pray against. Uh, and when I can pray in the spirit at home, uh, God can begin to do things in my life uh, I never could see done otherwise. Uh, you want to get into the culture of God. You want the culture of the Holy Ghost to get in your life. Uh, start praying in the spirit. Uh, start praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and watch God start molding you more than you've been molded before. Watch God start doing things through you you've never seen happen. Why? Because you've stepped out of a culture of the world and you've stepped into the culture of the spirit. And now the angels are interested in what you're doing. Now God's walking with you. You're not walking in the flesh. You're walking in the spirit. And there's a powerful demonstration of God that will work in your life. Why? Because the culture of God has been present in you. It's the culture of God to see miracles. It's the culture of God to see supernatural. It's the culture of God to see a demonstration of his spirit. It's a culture of God to see an outpouring. Revival is culture. How are we going to see it? By getting out of the flesh and getting into the spirit. Oh, I wish you'd lift your hands and pray in the spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Come on, let's do that for about 30 seconds more. Come on, pray. I I'm talking to somebody right now. You are frustrated because you're not seeing what you want to see. I think God's trying to help you. Start praying more in the Holy Ghost. Start praying more in the Holy Ghost. You're going to pray for really what's important to pray for. Hey, God can do a whole lot more when we let him take over, when we let his culture define us. How are you going to have, hey, would you put that regional revival slide up here? It's coming up, it'll come. How are you going to have regional revival, Apache Junction? It's not going to come from the flesh. How are you going to have regional? Hey, there's a lot of people. My God, there's a lot of people that live in the East Valley. There's a lot of people that live in Apache Junction. How? How are we going to reach everybody? How are we going to see what the vision that God has given to us, Pastor Strader? It's not going to come from the arm of the flesh. It's going to come by the Spirit. Why? Because it's not my might. It's not by power. But it's by the Spirit of Almighty God. That's how we have revival. That's how we have a demonstration. That's how we we have miracles. It's the culture of God's spirit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I need somebody who believes that God has a hundredfold revival for the East Valley to lift your hands and quit praying in English and start praying in tongues and let God begin to move some things through your voice. In Jesus' name. Florence, God, Santan Valley, Queen Creek, Gold Canyon, East Mesa, Fountain Hills, Scottsdale, Apache Junction. Ah, in Jesus' name. Come on, our flesh wants to stop after praying a couple minutes. But let's push a little bit because I believe God is trying to push us through the, the, the realm of the flesh and get us into that realm of the spirit. Oh, Is there a young man in the building that would come grab your pastor's hand and begin to pray right now in the spirit? Adrian, I want you to come pray with Pastor Strader. Josh, Josh, Kyle, come on, man. Come pray with Brother Strader. Anthony, I want you to grab his hand. We're not begging. We're not doing anything but praying in the spirit.
Come on, that's culture right there. That's a group of people getting connected by the communion of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and now God's going to begin to move some things uh, because you've left the flesh uh, and you're praying in the spirit. Hey, I believe that angels are being, my God, I feel Jesus. I believe that angels are starting to go to people right now. And they are going to be drawn to this church. I believe angels are being dispatched like the one that was sent to Cornelius. While Peter was praying, while Peter was praying, there was angels that went to Cornelius. There's people of that are going to be saints and part of Lighthouse Church uh, that God's ministering to and right now because of the prayers that you are praying in the Spirit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Kiarabashatayamahai. <laughs> Hey, God wants to do it. God's going to do it. Can you see what God sees? You can't do it by the flesh. You can only do it by the Spirit. Lord, let me see what you see in my church. Let me see what you see in my region. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. Kiarabashatayamahai. Come on, I believe that God desires for this church to be a sending sinner. This is an apostolic church. God is going to do apostolic things here. It's, it can't all happen from one church, but there's churches that are going to come from here. But it can't happen by the flesh. It can only happen by the Spirit. Young man, you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. you got to pray with passion. Jesus, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Hey, we're going to pray. I got more to preach, and I'm going to preach it because I believe the Lord wants me to preach it. But we're going to pray just a little bit more right here. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus.
Come on, some of y'all are praying and God's putting things on your mind. God's putting ideas on your mind. God's giving you visions. You want to know what that is? That's the spirit. That's the mind of the spirit right there. That's the mind of Christ. If you stay there, God's going to begin to develop you. God's going to begin to use you, ma'am. There are things that God wants to do through you. The gifts of the spirit, God wants you to operate in that. But you got to get familiar with the spirit. You got to get familiar with the Holy Ghost. You got to let the culture of God define your life. Kayama. You get close to God, you get to praying in the Spirit, it'll make you submit to God. It'll make you submit to your man of God. It'll make you be obedient to the Word of God. Why? Because God's molding you. You're maturing in Him. You're developing in Him. Oh, yes. Shataye. Hikarabo no shata. Come on, does anybody believe that there's people that God's talking to right now? Hey, I believe you're going to see people start coming. It might not happen in a week, but God's spirit is moving. Oh. I need you to hear me. Give me a moment. I know you're praying, but I need you to hear me right now. Don't move. If you're in the front, just stay here. Give me about ten more minutes, five, ten more minutes, and we're going to pray. Jesus. But culture goes a lot, a lot, a lot farther than what we do at home. We must be defined by the culture of the Spirit in our church must be defined by the culture of the Holy Ghost in our church services. Listen, it's powerful to be used of God behind closed doors at home. But we've got to have an apostolic atmosphere every time we come into these four walls. Because our prayers are going to do a whole lot. But if God is sending angels to people, and if God is, oh my God, if God is moving on people in, in, in this region of ours, in this region of the East Valley, if God is drawing people to Him by the Spirit of God that's moving through our prayers in our prayer closet. But if they come inside our church and they are not interest to, introduced to an apostolic, Holy Ghost filled culture, then we are going to miss out on the things that God is bringing to our doorstep. Let me say it again. If we do not have a culture of the Holy Ghost in our church, then all of the prayers behind closed doors of God bringing people to us, we're going to miss out on the harvest and the increase that God has because what starts in the Spirit must continue in the Spirit. Hey, I'm preaching to myself, okay? But it's so easy to come to church and say, I'm going to take it easy today. I'm preaching to Jake Foster. Okay, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm preaching to myself. I'm tired today. It would, it's so easy to just say, you know what? I'm just going to kick back and call it good. I've had a long week, Pastor Strader. I was busy at work for all five days, and I just need a rest. And I'll come to church. And when God's Spirit prompts me to do something, I might raise my hand. But don't tell me to dance, God, because I don't have the energy. Please, don't, God, don't let your Spirit prompt me to give a message in tongues. God, I'm not feeling it today. And so I might be praying in the spirit at home, but I might miss out on what God wants to do here. Hey, if I've got the spirit of God and I'm born again, thank you, Jesus. But every service, I believe that God's going to have people here that need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized. It's not up to them to create a culture. It's not up to them to praise God. It's not up to them to be led by the spirit. It's up to me. And so, hey, I might be tired, but hey, God, I want somebody to get filled with your spirit. So whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. I want to see people born again. God, let your culture define my church. Let every church service be powerful. Let your spirit move every time we enter this place.
Because I come and I'm tired and I'm worn out and I don't even realize it. But I wind up quenching what God is wanting to do in that service. And I'll tell you what, when we had Aria, we were in a place that was conducive to having a baby being born. It was clean. There were people there that were helping us. There were all these machines that were set up simply so that a baby could be born. Nine times out of ten, the people who are going to get the Holy Ghost are going to get the Holy Ghost in the church. There's got to be an atmosphere that is conducive for people to be born again. And I'm preaching, uh, listen, I mean this, I am preaching to myself. But if my brother or my sister, somebody that I don't even know, comes to church and they're broken and they're bound by drugs and they're bound by depression and they need what I have and I sit there and I'm tired or I sit there and I don't feel like doing it and God begins to deal. When, when God is prompting me to do something in the service, His Spirit is trying to move. That's the Spirit of God that's telling you to run the aisles. That's the Spirit of God that's telling you to dance. That's the Spirit of God that's telling you to do something a little bit crazy. You want to know why? Because God's culture is trying to take over. And if I quench it, uh, the culture of God is not going to do what it needs to do. But if I will just submit to the Spirit's leading, who knows what would happen every Sunday morning? Who knows what would happen every Sunday night? Uh, who knows what would happen every Wednesday night? Why? Because I've left the flesh uh, and I'm saying, God, what you tell me to do, I'm going to do. Our flesh wants, listen, my God, God is, help me, Jesus. You know what our flesh wants to do right now? Our flesh wants to stand in the same place and lift our hands and speak in tongues. But I believe right now God's spirit is trying to push us. We're tired, but you want to know what happens when the flesh dies? That's when the angels come. When Jesus was in the garden, he said, not my will, but your will be done. What happened? An angel came. When Jesus was buried in the grave, you want to know what the disciples saw when they got there? They saw two angels. When Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and he had fasted, you want to know what came and ministered to him? Angels. You want to know what that tells me? That tells me when my flesh dies, that opens up a channel to the supernatural. Hey, I'm tired. I don't want to praise. But if praising kills my flesh, I'll do it because I want revival. Hey, what is God telling you to do right now? I wish somebody would move a little bit. I wish you'd get comfortable. Get out of being comfortable and say, God, whatever you're telling me to do, I'll do it. I'll dance. I'll run. I want to see an atmosphere that's conducive to seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost. Close your eyes right now. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I want to do something that's out of the norm. Every eye closed, every hand lifted. The norm is not just standing and talking in tongues. We've done that. We did that. But I want you to say, God, I want you to lead my praise right now. Come on, with all sincerity, lift your voice. Kikayama Shataya. Oh, God, I'm tired. Jesus, I'm sore. But, Lord, whatever you tell me to do right now, I'm going to do it. Whatever you tell me to do right now, I'm going to do it. All right, we prayed. What has God told you to do? How does God want you to praise right now? How does God want you to move right now? Yeah, we lifted our hands and spoke in tongues. But I want you to let the Spirit dictate what you do. I wanted you to let it dictate your praise. That means moving. That means running. That means dancing. That means shouting. Come on, push, push, push. I know you're tired, but God will do something when you say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done.
Satai. I wish a couple young men will run the aisles right now. I wish somebody would start dancing in the Holy Ghost. You want to know what that is? That's the culture of the Holy Ghost. That's the culture of the Spirit. I don't just do it at home. I do it at church. I do it when everybody's looking. Ladies, would you grab each other's hand and begin to dance together right now in unity? Come on, we're doing this together. It's a culture. It's a fellowship. It's an association. It's a community. We're dancing together for a revival in our region. needs a miracle in this building? Who needs a healing right now? Who needs God to deliver your mind? Who needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I wish you'd run up here right now. I'm not praying for anybody. We're going to dance for it and God's going to do it. Can I have some men of this church begin to roll with your pastor? Oh, pastor, I got your back. Pastor, I got your back. Pastor, I got your back. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're in the culture of the spirit. Hey, you want to know what God's doing? God's looking down and seeing a church he can trust with souls. He's looking down and seeing a church he can trust with souls. He's seeing a church he can trust with an increase. Oh, God, I want you to have your way here. I want you to have your way. I don't care what anybody thinks. I will be more vile in the sight of my God. It's not about anybody else. It's about me and Jesus. It's about me and God. We're going to see it. Why? Because we are a part of the Spirit. If you have a need right now, lift your hands. Lift your hand if you have a need. Look around. If there's somebody next to you that has their hand lifted, I wish you'd begin to dance for them. I wish you'd begin to praise God for the miracle that he's going to do in their life. Hey, it's unorthodox, but that's okay. We're an unorthodox church. We're not bound by tradition. We're bound by the Spirit.
I want you to, I want whoever God places on your mind, I want you to go and you lay your hands on them and begin to pray over them in the spirit right now. We're going to begin to function in the Holy Ghost right now. If God puts a word to your mind, I want you to begin to speak it over them in Jesus' name. Hey, we're used in the gifts of the spirit. We're walking in the spirit. We are a spirit-defined and led church. That's why we're going to have revival. That's why we're growing and not diminishing. Why? By the spirit. Spirit. He got Ramaha Sotoy, Ramotoromo Satai. Hey, we got some young girls down here tapped into the spirit. Hey, those are people God's going to use right there. Oh, God's got calling on their life. Why? Because they're letting the spirit define them. They're letting the spirit guide them. My school will have revival. My school's going to see a demonstration of the spirit. There's joy. There's peace in the Holy Ghost. What do joyous people do? They dance. They're happy. They got joy in their heart by the Spirit. That's unity, Sister Angela. That's unity, Sister Jessica. That's the communion of the Spirit. That's the communion of the Holy Ghost. That's where power is. That's where strength is. That's where the demonstration is. Oh, the power of the communion of the Holy Ghost. Hey, I believe God's healing some people that aren't here tonight. If you're on live stream, I want you to begin to thank God for it. I want you to begin to worship God in the spirit. Well, I don't feel it like you are feeling it there, preacher. That's all right. You have the same spirit we have. Start praying in the Holy Ghost and watch what God does. I believe angels are going to go to the hospital room where Brother Crumweed's brother is. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit.
Come on, I want, I want you to begin to make some commitments. God, this same spirit that we feel here, I'm doing it again on Wednesday. I'm doing it again on Sunday morning. When God brings the visitors on Sunday morning, we're going to dance like we lost our mind. Hey, they might not get it, but they're going to feel what we're feeling. And when they feel it, they're going to want what we have. That's it, Sister Gracie, pray in the Holy Ghost. God's using your prayers right now. God's using your prayers right now. God's doing things through you right now. You might never know what it is, but you're going to get to heaven, and you're going to see the fruit of your prayers. Keep praying in the Spirit. Keep praying in tongues. Let God do something through you. Come on, young men. Come on, young ladies. Come on, saints. Come on, elders. Every one of us, there's things that are happening by the prayers we're praying by the dance that we're dancing. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus. That's it, Brother Josh. Step into it right now. That's the culture of the Holy Ghost, culture of the Spirit of God. Come on, that's it. We're in the flow. Just stay in it. Look, come on, let's let it flow. Just stay right there. Oh, that, that prayer that you feel, that travail, that, that, that feelings that you feel, just let it go right now. Whatever God's telling you to do, just stay in it. We've stepped into the realm of the Spirit.
Hallelujah. I want us to do something right now, if we would, if you would. I want every every child from the ages if you're awake, whatever age, and you can walk and you're not asleep. All of our children, you hear me? I want you, if you would, please come up front and I want you to line up front. I want your toes to touch the altar. Right up here in front. Hallelujah. I want you so close to the altar you can your toes can touch it. I don't know what it is about it. Your toes touching the altar. I do it all the time. It just brings so much joy, so much comfort and peace. I know that's weird, I, but that's just how my mind thinks. Hallelujah. Sister Little Gal was playing the organ over there, and sometimes I'm so close to her, and she's probably spitting on her. But I just want to get so close to the altar. Every child, that's good. You're doing good. I want every young person and young adult up to the age of 25 to come and stand right behind them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Every one of you. Hallelujah. Get as close to them as, as, as appropriately possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Young men, I want you to come on this side, young men. Uh, y'all, go over, y'all go over here. Gentry, let's, y'all go over there. Y'all, and then ladies, come over here. Yes, y'all sit down. Gentry, little buddy. Yeah, you go follow Gentry. Follow the leader. Go down there. Yep, y'all, y'all scoot down. Sit. Hallelujah. There we go. Hallelujah. Then I want, if you would, all the adults, if you want apostolic culture and these kids and these young people, I want you to gather around about around them or behind them. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I feel a spirit of impartation here. But you cannot impart what you do not possess. Hallelujah. I don't impart anything to my kids. I want to impart to them a spirit and a life of prayer, a love for Jesus Christ, an apostolic identity and culture. Hallelujah. I, if they don't learn anything else from me, I'm satisfied with those things. And all the sub bullets of those things that fall in, the, in order. A love for God. A love for God, a love for prayer, consecration, and apostolic identity and culture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What I want us to do where it is appropriate, adults, I want you to put your hand on the young person in front of you. And young people, young adults, I want you where it's appropriate to put your hand on the shoulder of the one in front of you. And all of our children, if I want you to listen to the pastor, would you, would you do me a favor and lift your hands? I want you to close your eyes, all of our children. <clears throat> Don't worry about your friend. Just If they're not doing it, you don't worry about them. Just close your eyes, children. Lift your hands, both of them. Both of them towards heaven right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Young adults, youth, I want you to lift your hands, your other hand that's not on, on somebody. Hallelujah. We're going to pray right now. Brother Call will help me pray that apostolic identity and culture would flow and be imparted. Hallelujah. First to our parents that it would be a culture at home, that it would be a culture when they see us at home. I pray that we as adults would hunger after consecration and prayer, that it would be... It would be so, so easy for our young people and our children to understand what is happening in the spirit. Hallelujah. I don't want to teach them how to watch movies. I don't want to teach them how to watch television. I don't want to watch them how to do the things of the world. I want to teach them how to pray. I want to teach them how to fast. I want to teach them how to live for God. I want to teach them how to have church. I want to teach them how to win souls. I don't want to teach them how to play video games. I want them to catch the culture of the apostolic identity. God, if anybody's going to lead them, let it start within the parents and the adults of this church. And let it flow to the young people and the young adults. And let it flow into the children. Oh, oh. 
children pray right now with your hands lifted. Children, don't look around, nobody. Don't look at anybody, but I want you praying right now in the Holy Ghost. Young people, young adults, lay your hands on their head. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray like this, God, give them a spirit of apostolic identity and culture. Give them a spirit of consecration, a spirit of prayer. Give them a love for God, not of Hollywood. Give them a love for the things of God, not the things of this world. Give them a love for prayer, not for playing video games. God! Give them a love for kingdom culture, not the world culture. Yes, we can have fun, but if we don't, we can't have fun if we can't have great church, if we can't win souls. Come on, it's about to happen right now. Push, push. Children, I want you to begin to lift up your voice. I want you to begin telling God, Lord, I want to love you. I want to love you with everything within me. I want to love you first, and I want to love you with everything. Jesus, I want to worship you with everything that I, that's within me. That's how I want you to pray. Jesus, give me a love for you that supersedes any love of this world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put those right there just for right now. You can get them in a minute. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, our eyes are closed. Our eyes are closed. Oh, let's look up to heaven right now. Hallelujah. That's it. You're doing good, children. You're doing good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to worship like I've never worshipped. I'm going to praise like I've never praised. I'm going to live for God like I've never lived for God. I'm going to let my light shine so that my friends see Jesus. I'm going to let my light shine. I'm going to, I'm going to dress holy. I'm going to react holy. I'm going to be holy. I'm going to love God. I'm going to be at church when I can be at church because I want my light to shine. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <coughs> Hallelujah. Parents, if you want to come and pray for your kids, you can come on this platform right now. We'll move this pulpit back. I want you to I want you to follow after the Holy Ghost. Don't do it if you don't feel it, but if you feel it, it is in complete order for you to come and lay hands on your child and begin to pray the blood of God over them. Maybe there's a child, maybe there's a young person, maybe there's a young adult that doesn't have their parent here, but there is a family here that loves you. Hallelujah, we're behind you. Go lay your hands on them and say, God, in the name of Jesus, he they will be an apostolic, one God, tongue talking, holy roller. Jesus' name, proclaiming and believing, child of God. Come on, refill us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Refill us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's it, James. You're doing good. That's it, James. 
Go after God. That's it, James. Go after him right now. Let the, yes, let the tears flow. That's the Holy Ghost coming upon you, son. He come out yet out of our soul. Let the tongues roll. Let the Holy Ghost flow, James. That's it, yes. You're filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God. That's it, Gracie. Go after it. Go after it. Go after it, Zoe. Go after it. Go after it, Remy. Go after it. Go after it, Sadie. That's it, Noah. Go after it. That's it, Aria. Go after it right now. John, that's it, son. Yes. You're doing good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Come on, go after it, go after it, go after it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes, hallelujah. Be refilled right now. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's it, Isaiah.
your eyes and weep before the Lord. I tell you what, God's been so good to us. is here. Not everybody here has a spouse, but everybody here has someone that loves them in this room. But I want you to get with your spouse if they're here. And if they're not here, I want you to partner with somebody. We're going to pray one more prayer, what I think will be one more prayer. Hallelujah. If your spouse is not here, find someone and link up with them. Don't be bashful. Don't be afraid. We're here together. This will apply to every all ways and all things. Hallelujah. Brothers, find a brother. Sisters, find a sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Y'all can connect together. If your spouse is here, grab her by the hand. Hallelujah. just a moment, I want us to pray that this apostolic culture that we're talking about, that was preached about tonight, would be elevated in our homes. It cannot happen in the church if it does not happen at home. I said it already, you cannot impart what you do not possess. You want to impart salvation, you got to have salvation. You want to impart prayer, you have to have a life of prayer. And it has to be something that is not hidden. I know it says going through the secret place, going through your closet. But there should be at least some moments and times where your family sees that you're in prayer. Or that you're going to pray. It's a shame that our kids would see us do the things of the world more than they would see us do the things of God. We end up teaching them, we end up teaching them, not with our words, but by our actions, who we really love. I'm guilty. I'll have both my hands lifted at times where I have 
fallen on this. I failed utterly. And ask God to forgive me. Because I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But if it's going to start, it's got to be it's got to be started intentionally. And you've got to say, I want it to start in my home. And then maybe it's already started, and that's great. But we want to pray, God, let it be elevated. Let it be magnified and amplified in, so, in a special way in our home. That even if you don't have children, it permeates the walls of your home. I heard a, a preacher, Brother Cody Marks. He said he can take a vial. He has a swimming pool, and he can take a, his wife can take a vial, just a small vial of, of that pool, just a small little vial down to Leslie Pools. And they can, just from that small vial, they can, they can tell you the entire contents and the health of the entire pool of 20,000 gallons of water. One small vial. And they can prescribe chemicals that would correct the pool, the water in the pool. The point is this. If you were the straw that God plucked out to evaluate the health of a church, what would he find? Let that conviction settle into your heart because it has settled into mine. And I pray like this. This is how we're about to pray. God, if it starts in any home, let it start in mine. If it's going to start in any heart, let it start in mine. I'm not looking at you right now. I'm praying for me and my family and my and my wife and my kids. And I want you to pray for yours and your spouses, even if they're lost, even if they've passed. I want you to pray right now. Let's lift our hands, the hands that you have that you can lift. Lift those up. And let's pray the apostolic culture would start in our homes right now. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, let's just clap our hands unto the Lord. And there, there has been a, such a great spirit of God here today. I thank you for pushing in prayer and praise today. Amen. And you pushing past the flesh, you're getting into the spirit. What a man, there's such a this is awesome tonight. I said, this is awesome. Hey Amen. I want this to happen every time we gather together. It can't, maybe it's not always going to look just like this, but I want it to be just as powerful, more powerful. Hey Amen. I want others as they come in to see and to feel what we have here. Church, don't ever be bashful and afraid for what we have. Ever. I will never apologize by being radically apostolic. Never. I'll never apologize for being radical about God. When they say we're a radical church, it's a compliment, and we say thank you. And some may leave because of it, but those that are hungry for it will stay, and they'll be, they'll be fishers of men. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm never going to be bashful or afraid by the lifestyle that we live, by the way that we worship. Call me crazy. Call us crazy. We're crazy for the Lord. Amen. God bless you, church. We love you. Appreciate you. Shake hands with each other. Love each other. Have a great week.